welcome to another massive edition of the RDFNL Netball Show. Looking back on last weekend and looking ahead to this weekend, my name's Angie. I'm joined by Tara Murray from the Star Weekly. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Certainly an exciting round of netball that took part on the weekend. I mean, they're always face it, they're, they're all very exciting. But I think the uh, the big result of the weekend, which we'll touch on straight away, is Riddle taking down Rupertswood in, uh, in a result that I don't think too many people tipped at all. Look, I tipped Rupertswood, but it didn't surprise me that Riddle bounced back. Riddle obviously come in into the game on the back of two 30-goal losses, and mm. that was probably a little bit of a shock. So obviously in this one, it was the Sharks who started the best, and in the end, the Bombers were able to run over the top of them, and it was a 12-goal win, so it's the second time the Bombers have beaten the Sharks this season. I take more out of this one than the first time round, because obviously the Sharks were missing a few players that first time, where this one, you've got a 12-goal goal win, and I, I was speaking to Lauren Close, and she was quite ecstatic to... to not only have a win, but have a win like that. So they've been a little bit all over the shop the last few weeks and they got most of their players back so they can get that consistency and it seals their top um, six spot as well. So they didn't play finals last year. They have shown um, how far they have come in the last 12 months. Yeah, certainly a fantastic performance by them. And this will be, uh, this is sort of a sort of nice little build up to what we'll see in the finals as well from both sides. We, you know, hopefully Rupert's Wood could bounce back and hopefully the Bobbers could still be a threat because at the end of the day, we, it was only a few weeks ago, we were talking about that uh, Riddle could miss the finals. Look, obviously, I didn't ever think Riddle would mm. um, lose the finals. I thought they had too much class, especially um, at the ends of their court. You've got Lauren Coase down one end, who we all know has played A&L, and you've got Beck Caldwell, who has been one of the best shooters in the competition. So I didn't ever think they'd um, not play finals, and they're, they're too good a side not to. Mm. And they've got some um, class in that midcourt as well. And we've seen the last few years, Riddle and Rupert's Wood have got a real rivalry coming up, a, a real rivalry they've built up. So mm. I know both these teams want to be, beat yeah. each other, and it could be interesting if they face each other in finals. Finals. So obviously for Rupert's Wood, they still sit second position, but now they're only percentage ahead of um, Wallen, and those two teams play each other, I think, in the final round. So it could be a quite juicy um, final round who's playing for second and who's playing for third. Should be, uh, we'll be watching that with great interest over the next few weeks. Uh, Rock Bank, uh, well, if they've basically put one big nail in their hopes for uh, for playing finals with a big win over Broadford. Look, now it's it's going to take a miracle for them mm. to miss finals now. You've got two, but two games clear, aren't they? They're two games clear with two rounds remaining and a slight bit of percentage ahead of Diggers Rest. Mm. So it will require Rock Bank to lose both their matches. They do play Wood and Heskett this week, which they will go in as favourites. So for them, obviously, they just needed to get that big win against um, Broadford, like every all the other teams in the finals have done. And they ended up doing that. So it was a 29-goal win, and obviously they had a 30-goal win the week before. So so they're starting to get these big wins, which we haven't seen before. And I'm not sure whether Rock Bank has ever played A-grade finals. Or if no, they, they have, haven't. It would have, yeah, exactly. Yeah. They've never played. So they're one step closer, a win this week, and they play finals. Yeah, that is quite amazing. And uh, they were down a percentage a handful of weeks ago, but they're starting to build up on top of that. Uh, Macedon really flexed its muscles with a strong win over Melton Centrals. It is. It was an interesting one. I think Melton Centrals know they, they can't play finals this year, so they have been trying a few different things. They've been trying a few different players. On, on the weekend, they had Marty and Keely Button, a mother and daughter conference combination actually play on the court together in A grade. So I think that was a pretty special combination there. They also had two sister combinations mm. in the match there. So for them, obviously, they're trying a few different things. They've brought up a few youngsters. For the Cat, it's, they're just doing what they've done all season, sitting on the top, top of the ladder. They've slowly built, and we're starting to see these really big wins. Obviously, we saw them um, absolutely smash Macedon, not Macedon, sorry, Riddle a few weeks ago, and I think that made everyone go... We already mm. knew they were a good side, but stood up and take that. And obviously, you've got a 51-goal um, win here. And the catch shot at 86%, which is really good. I know it was windy at times on Saturday. Yeah. So for them to shoot at that was really good. And look, they keep doing what they're doing. Yeah, certainly a good performance there. Um, speaking of good performance, I think the Hawks were quite solid uh, against Bromsey. Uh, sc the scores were levels at half time, 33 goals apiece before uh, the red back shot away. It was. I was. I actually saw the second half of this match. So I saw when um, when this came, the scores were level. And in the end, it was the red backs' experience that just sort of showed in the mid court. You had Lauren Angwin and Kaylee Armstrong. They were able to create a few turnovers in that mid court, and it sort of um, got the game back on the red backs' term in that third quarter so that was sort of the difference in the last quarter it was pretty even until it blew out those last few minutes and look we're sort of seeing with the Hawks the last few weeks they have got players playing 19s and A grade that they do run out of legs a little bit and I think that was the case there but the Hawks would take a lot of positives out of that they probably haven't been in a game like that with a side against Romsey at half time for a long time so there's some really good signs um, going forward they've got a lot of young talented players in that side and we're starting to see what it could be like in the future Yeah, and, and sad news with Sarah as well. I know we've touched on it earlier on, but 
Uh, it's looked like she'll miss uh, all of next season as well too, which is a bit of a shame. I know, playing footy. So yeah, I obviously heard yeah. her knee playing footy. But obviously we've mentioned that. But she, it's not the only talented youngster mm. there. They've got some good players in the midcourt. I know Brittany Bowen's one in the midcourt. You've got Tara Byrne up in the goals. Um, you've got Alexandra Watkins up in defence. So they've st- they've got a bit of height. They've got some t- youth in there. So And they, they are building, and that's the thing. Each year they keep building. They've won more games than they have for a number of years. So we're starting to see the real development there. And for Romsey, I think that all but seals their final final spot as well yep. so they, they've it's been a really interesting season for Romsey they've been in just about every single game they've been in they've been in on the wrong side of some thrillers they've won some thrillers so it's been a really really interesting season for them but it looks like they'll play finals and uh, Wallen will look to cement their spot uh, comfortably trying to push for that top two uh, spot if, if it's still mathematically possible and basically ending Diggers rest finals hopes look and you've got that there Wallen is looking for a top two spot and that's likely to come down to the final round of the season when they do play Rupert's Wood so mm. you've got the two teams I think are equal on points so it's only percentage now separating those sides so it could be who Whoever wins that final um, match gets the second spot. And considering Wallen didn't have an A-grade side last year, the fact they could be finishing second shows how much work they have done in the last 12 months. So you've got scores were level against the Burrows, and then um, Wallen was able to win the middle two quarters to sort of get the margin out, and it ended up being a nine-goal win. So it was a really good win for the Magpies there. For the Burrows, as you said, it basically ends their finals hopes. They need to win their final. The only way they will make finals is they need to win their final two matches. Rockbank needs to lose their final two matches, plus um, Diggers Rest needs to pick up a bit of percentage. It's sort of been one of those years for the Burrows. I don't think a lot's yeah. gone right. They had a good lineup on paper, had some really good wins early on, but then injuries, unavailabilities, just things haven't gone right for the Burrows this year. Well, let's uh, let's see how they'll go this weekend. Of course, uh, as we head into the second last round, and for those who pick up the other uh, copy of the record. Uh, the RDFNL record. We're running. We've run, been running our first uh, ever netball tippy competition, and uh, it's basically a two horse race now because it's you and uh, Tim Tim Michelle from the leader who is uh, leading the way. There's only one tip separating both of you guys, and it looks like it'll come out of either one of both of you. It is. I, I had one poor round earlier in the season when I tipped a couple of upsets that didn't come to fruition, mm. and that sort of cost me. Obviously, Tim's the other journalist there. Oh, he, he'll rub it into me. If he, yeah. if he beats me in the netball tipping, I won't hear the end of it because <laughs> apparently I'm the netball expert out of the two of them. So hopefully I can pick up an upset or two in the last couple of rounds to hit back and get the, um, the lead and the win. Let's see if uh, we can pick a few winners out there today. I start to sound like a, a, you know, a betting agency here, but we've got Broadford and Diggers Rest. Look, I think Diggers Rest will get this one easy. Obviously, we, Diggers Rest hasn't had the season they would like, and neither has Broadford, but Diggers Rest, I think, will be way too strong, and they need this win if they're to keep any chance of getting into finals. Mountain Centrals and Rupo? Rupo. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think Rupo will definitely bounce back there. We have seen Mountain Centrals have um, struggled this season. Look, probably their home court does give them a little bit of a favour there, but their problem has been um, shooting consistency, So, and it does get pretty windy at Arnold's Creek, so it doesn't really help them at this point, but I think Rupo's will Quite easy. Probably one of the more important matches of the weekend. We've got uh, Rockbank and Wooden Hesket. We say it's important because Rockbank win, then they're in the finals. It is, and Rockbank can't take Wooden Hesket lightly. I think Wooden Hesket knocked them off earlier in the season, mm. so that was an upset win there, and one of, probably one of the Hawks' better wins of the season. So for them, obviously, the Hawks will be looking to get another win and another upset there to show you where they have sort of gone. For the Rams, they'll be determined to get that win. They want that final spot. They've said all season they wanted to play finals. That was their aim this season mm. to play finals. I don't think a lot of other people people thought that possible was going to happen They, but they have surprised a lot of people a win this week, there's their finals berth and they'll be pretty happy out there at Rock Bank if they can get it. It's, yeah, to celebrate at home too, it'd be absolutely fantastic Blockbuster games uh, to finish off, we've got Romsey and Riddle. This could be a classic mm. we have seen, we, t- we talk about the rival between Riddle and Rupert's, well, Riddle and Romsey's another one, so earlier this season Romsey won by a goal and I was out watching that game and that was quite a thriller, both teams had periods of control, so it'll be interesting to see how far these two sides have come Obviously, they're sitting fourth and fifth at the moment on the ladder, so there's not much difference between them. Whether I reckon we'll have another close one. We've seen Romsey's been involved in close ones all year, so it'll be quite an interesting match there. Who wins this one? I have tipped Romsey, but could go either way. And the final game, which is another blockbuster in itself, uh, Masson have yet to drop a game in season 2018. They travel over to Wallen, who's been one of the form sides of the comp. This is this will be an interesting match because obviously you've got the top three sides in the competition. You've got Ma- um, Macedon, obviously the best side. Rom- Rupert's Wood hasn't played Macedon since earlier in the season, so it'll be good for Macedon to test themselves against one of those sides. And we'll get an indication of how far 
magpies are compared to the cats. Obviously, we saw some close results earlier between them in the season, but this is a good indication of how close they are and whether they're, they're improving what they need to do come finals. Obviously, the best way to see where you are in the season, measure yourself against the benchmark in the competition. So I think that's a good opportunity for the magpies to see exactly how close they do sit to the magpies. Uh, not sorry, the, the magpies to the cats, yeah. and maybe try a few things as well. Obviously, they would like the win, but obviously, uh, if, if not, they can try a few different things and things they might take into finals because they could quite easily play the cats in finals. Who wins this one? The cats. Yeah. Should be an intriguing round. So we've got three must-see games this weekend where, where it does impact everything that happens in the top six. Thanks to my friends at On Time Delivery Solutions. Thanks to you, Tara, for jumping on board. We'll uh, look forward to catching next week and hopefully you can make a dent and try and make things interesting as we head into the final round of uh, RDF and Netball tipping through the record. Thanks for having me.